Welcome back to a new video about current sources using BGTs. We have in this case the second example and we will follow up on the first example and we add now a, another transistor here which will be a beta helper. We will see later why it is called a beta helper. And we will see that this current source or current mirror configuration is better than the usual simple two transistor BGT current mirror or current source. And again, we will see that the IC2, which is our load current, is approximately equal to the reference current. And we will see also other parameters like the variation in the beta and what kind of effect it has on load current. Of course, we will do that step by step in all calculation, also verifying these SPICE simulations. So let's look at our circuit. As said, we have three uh, transistors, Q1, Q2, and Q3. They are all matched. That means they have the same early voltage. In this case, it's the infinity. They have the exact same beta. We will vary that later in the simulations to check what's, uh, what kind of effect it has on the load. And they have also the same physical dimensions like the emitter area. In addition, we have two sources. In this case, we have the VCC and VEE. The values are shown here, so it's 10 and a minus 10 volts. And we have also the VBE. And for all transistors, we assume it is 0 0.7 volts. Now, in this case, we'll again design for the load current. In this case, 4 milliamps. And again, in this case, is IC2 here. So how can we work this out? Let's see in the solutions. We start in the calculations always by designating, in this case also, the nodes. In this case, I have a node X here. And there's also a node here, which is called here just Y. So simple, you can also call it A and B, it doesn't matter. So let's then set up the Kirchhoff's current low KCL at node X. What you see is the IRF is coming in and it will split in IC1 and IB3. That's shown here. And let's call this equation number one because we've got uh, some equations here and it is handy to number them. We'll also set up the Kirchhoff's current low at node Y. You see here the I E3, which is the emitter current of the Q3, and it will split in IB1 and IB2. That's shown here, and also name that another equation, equation number two. Now, since we know that again, in this case, the VBE1 and also VBE2, which is the base emitter voltage for the Q1 and also for the Q2, they're exact same because this potential is exact same for both of them. That means we can say that the collector currents of the Q1 and Q2 are exact same. That means IC1 is IC2 but also IB1 is IB2 because they have exact same beta. So that is just a linear relationship. And since this is also true, we have also that the emitter current here, IE1 and IE2, which is not shown here. That's also true. That's always the case, by the way, it doesn't matter what kind of operation you have for your transistor. The collector current plus the base current will always result in the emitter current. That is just simple Kirchhoff's current law application. Now, when we now use equation number two, using these uh, identities or do these uh, conditions, we can say the following, we can say now IE3, which is actually here in this case, IB1 plus IB2, but since IB1 and IB2 are exact same, we can say just two times IB1 or two times IB2. Now, this is just another equation, so we just call it equation number three. Then we can also write the following. We have also the IE3, which is then beta plus one times the IB3. That is actually the same for the Q1 and Q2 also. You can also say here the IE1 is beta plus one times the IB1 and also similar for the Q2. Now, when you now use this equation in this format, such that you express the IB3 in this form, you can now call this equation number four and then move on and then say, let's substitute now this equation number three in this equation number four. And you have now this expression for the base current of the Q3 in this form. Why is this handy? Because when I now number this as equation number five, I can now substitute that in equation number one where I see this IB3. Of course, we want to work towards the IC2 in terms of IRF, that is our final goal. And now we have a situation where we get closer because now we have IB2, which is related to IC2. So when you do that, you can see IC1 plus this, which is the equation number five here, and you get now this equation. Now as said, now let's number this also, this equation number set as said, the IC1 and IC2 are exact same, that's just here. And since IC2 is beta times IB1, we also have the IB2 is IC2 over beta. Now, if I now name this number seven, equation number seven, now substitute this into six, so seven into six, 
you will get this expression. You also know that IC1 is IC2, so you can also replace that. Now you see here, only one unknown on the right-hand right side. So because there's two and the beta has just a number here, assuming it's constant, and we have an IRF in terms of IC2. Okay, we can now work it out in terms of IC2 still in, in a much nicer form. So we get now beta times uh, times beta numerator and denominator, you get this. Now this expression is very similar to the current mirror, except that this beta is here. That is what's called the beta helper. So it's actually reducing that error in the reference current and also the IC2 by a factor beta. That's actually what's, why it's called beta helper. Now, when I now work this out, you can take out the IC2 out of the parentheses, you get 1 plus 2 over the beta times beta plus 1, which is shown here. So, IRF is this number times the IC2. You can see it is a 1 plus is some small number because beta is 100 times 101, which is a large number. 2 over that very large number is very small, still not of course 0, but it is close to 1 when you look at this parentheses. You can also work out the IC2 in terms of IRF, that's shown here. So just use flip the equation and also use, you take it in one fraction, you get this one. And again, you can look at this, that this is almost one when beta goes to large values. Now, when we have our situation, we can use the beta and also our uh, given value for the uh, load curve, which is 0 0.004 or 4 milliamps. You can now calculate what the required reference current must be it is very close to 4 milliamps but it's just 4.0008 milliamps so that's why we have so actually you get 0 0.8 micro amps a little bit larger than that one so we can now use this so what's the next step the next step is using this in our calculations we now look at Kirchhoff's voltage law because we need to calculate this R and for that we need to have the voltage drop across this. Now we can now set it up. You can say the VCC is equal to R times the reference current, that is just Ohm's law, plus the VBE3 plus the VBE1 or VBE2, doesn't matter, plus the VE. So we have now the equation here. Now I need R. I have actually the rest of the parameters because I just calculate the IRF and the rest I know from the given. So I can say R is equal to VCC minus the VBE3 minus VBE1 minus VB, VEE over the reference current IRF. Now, if I now substitute that, this is 0 0.7, this is 0 0.7, this is minus 10, so you get the minus minus 10, so be careful with that. And you have now IRF here. And if I now substitute that, which is of course this 4.0008 milliamps, and this is 18.6 proxim uh, exactly, the numerator. And you will get now 4,649 ohms. So it's almost 4.65 kilo ohms for our res resistor. Now that is actually the whole calculations. Of course, we need to check that. So let's do that in the simulations. This is a simulation uh, simulator circuit. You can, see, you can see here the first VCC and VEE. So two DC sources, so grounded in the middle. We see the reference and also our calculated value for R. Now, you can already see that it is not 4 milliamps, it is larger, so you can see it is 31 microamps larger. And it's also here that it is not exactly as we have calculated, so it's also a little bit larger. So, what can we do? We can fine tune, you can also say this is fine, this is good enough, so the error I don't uh, mind, I don't accept that for the practical purposes, which is perfectly possible. But if I want to fine tune this, I did that, I have changed again the R and increased that in order to reduce this current and also reduce again that current because this is a lot larger than what I have calculated here. So I go from 4649 to 4685. So it is not that much uh, increase. So it is, if I look at it, it is 36 uh, ohms, so not that much. So if I do that, you can see that here, then it is 4 milliamps exactly, and here 4.001 milliamps, which is actually a rounding of here, and the rest is exact same. You can also see that IC1 is exact same as IC2, which we have also used, and IB1 and IB2 is also equal to each other. You can see this 40 micro because it's just divided by 100 of the 4, 40, uh, 4 milliamps. So this is verified. We can say we have actually achieved our goal for this analysis. Now, let's look at it more detail in our simulation results and see what this load voltage change 
will do with the load current. Now I have now uh, disabled this part. So I have actually put here a sweep or a changing voltage. You can see that here. And I will now see what this current IC2 will do if I change this VL. And there is the exact same. So if you, you will use the tuned value for R, uh, what we have calculated. And I also put these two DC sources, so the VCC and VE, on top of each other. So they have actually 20 volts here. So I have placed, replaced the ground here. So what happens? Let's see. This is the plot. You can see the load voltage going from 2 volts to 20, so in step uh, in, uh, in this uh, format. And this is the load current IC2. You can see it started at 3.9990 milliamps, all the way to 4 here, and I am actually here, so it is 3.9996 milliamps, so almost 4 milliamps. So you can see that this is indeed very close to what we have calculated, also required. But you can also see the following that is actually more important. I changed the load voltage drastically from 2 volts to 20, but my load current is not changing at all. So well, that's actually perfectly what we wanted. And this is even better than the simple two transistor current mirror. Now moving on to an, another analysis, which is the load voltage and the load current variations. Uh, as a function of the variation of the current gain beta of the transistor. In this case, I only change the current gain of the Q2. So then we have the following situation. This is another plot. You can see for four different values of the beta. You have the blue, the, uh, the brown one, we have the pink and also the green one. It's the beta 50, 100, 200 and 500. This is the load current for each of the beta values. And this is again the load voltage. So you can see again from 2 to 20 volts, load voltage variation. And you can see how much this, for example, looking at the blue one, I mean the brown one for our 100 for beta, it goes from 3.99957 all the way to 3.99572. Yeah, almost nothing actually changes. It changes really small. So I have actually made the precision here very, very, very accurate. But still, this difference is not that much. What's the conclusion here? If the beta is increasing, yes, the current increases, but very, very, very small. And we can also see that increasing the load current as a function of the load voltage variation is also very small. So it is actually quite stable in terms of beta variations, the current gain, and also the variation, the load voltage, if I look at the load current only. So that's the complete situation here for this example to about the BGT current source using a beta helper, which is then this transistor Q3. That is actually our, uh, helping us in this case and making it much better than example number one, which is a two transistor current mirror. The similar variation can be done, can be used uh, and designed uh, using MOSFETs or other transistor um, variations and types. If you have any questions about this example, please let me know in the comments section. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. I will move on with the third example and also other examples in this uh, current source uh, and topics and discuss the Wettler and the Wilson and also other circuit configurations. So stay tuned and see you next time in another video. Take care.